today I am so excited to have Dr. Anastasia Alvarado as my first guest to the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Podcast. I'm just so excited. Um, and I'm going to call her Dr. Stacy because that's what we call her. Uh, I want to read a little bit of her bio. Dr. Anastasia Alvarado is a child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist who has spent her career serving and educating underserved populations about mental health. She graduated magna cum laude with a BS in biology from Winthrop University. She received her medical degree from Morehouse School of Medicine in Atlanta, Georgia, and continued at this institution for her adult psychiatry residency training. Her child and adolescent psychiatry fellowship was completed at the University of South Carolina School of Medicine. She is double board certified by the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology in Adult and Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. Dr. Alvarado is knowledgeable about the treatment of various psychiatric conditions and has experiences in different mental health settings from private practice to inpatient psychiatry. She currently works in community mental health at Viewpoint Health in Norcross, Georgia. She serves as volunteer assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry at Morehouse School of Medicine. In addition, Dr. Alvarado works part-time for Advanced Medical Review as a medical peer reviewer, as well as an expert consultant for GuidePoint. She maintains professional membership in the American Psychiatric Association, the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, and the Georgia Psychiatric Physicians Association. She is a proud member of the illustrious Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, my soror. She is married to Pedro E. Alvarado, who is her biggest cheerleader and supporter. Dr. Alvarado considers her profession to be a calling from God and works to facilitate education, advocacy, and awareness in the field of mental health. I love her not only because of the work that she does, but not only because she is my soror, but also because she is my sister-in-law. My sister-in-love is what I call her. You heard the name Alvarado. Her husband, Pedro, is my husband's baby brother, as they call him. And I just love her. She's been a gift to our family. She is a gift to everybody that knows her. And I call her not only my sister in love, not only my soror, but I call her my friend. And it's just a blessing to love the people that, that are married into your family. It's just a blessing. I'm telling you, it's a blessing. And I Amen. love her. <laughs> I love her. She is a gift to our family. And so, Stacy, I just want to get into it, girl. I want us to talk about this um this topic you know you know this podcast is um the the focus of my podcast is on um self-care for women of color and um you have been um you just recently spoke uh facilitated workshop for us at the harmonize your life women's uh self-care retreat 2019 you you spoke in 2019 and 2020 and so I'm so glad that you are a part of now. I'm just going to say you're just a part of the faculty of the retreat because, I mean, they love you. They love Dr. Stacy, and I love her. And she and just I love I love coming and <laughs> I have enjoyed every bit of it and my own self-care in the midst of it. So, so Dr. Stacy, you know that this podcast um, was birthed out of the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Retreat. Um, I just recently um, we just had the uh, retreat 2020, the Harmonize Your Life Self-Care Women's Retreat 2020 was just the first weekend in January. And um, last year in 2019, you spoke, you facilitated workshop for us in 2019 up in the mountains in Dahlonega. And then this year uh, at Lake Lanier Island, where we were together uh, for the women. This was our third retreat that uh, that I have facilitated on uh, for women who have come together around this topic of self-care. And I have been uh, passionate about this subject for a number of years in my own life. And then with the release of my book um, in 2018, Harmonize Your Life, A Journey Toward Self-Care, uh, you, wrote, you wrote one of the um, one of the endorsements for the book. And then you have been on the faculty 
of the retreat. And so we love having you on, on the uh, retreat balcony. And so I just want to share a little bit about, um, just get a little, just have us talk a little bit about the subject that you shared this year. Your topic was melanated magic, protecting your magic within. Um, I just want to share real quick before you, um, before you, before you delve in, I want to share what, what, what I was thinking about when I asked you to do the, the workshop. I was concerned. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I was concerned about women of color as it relates to, um, um, our, our health, our mental health, our physical health. And I wanted you to talk to us about, um, the racial disparities in, and the things that we must be concerned about as women of color, discussing the things that we deal with that are particular to us and um, bringing a, a sense of awareness and help us with strategies for personal growth, wellness, um, and loving ourselves as women of color. And you brought such a dynamic workshop. I mean, it was just, it was awesome. The women that came, they're still talking about it. And so I thought it would be wonderful to have you as our first guest on the Harmonize Your Life uh, self-care podcast. So, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Well, first, it was uh, a pleasure and my privilege to be at, the, at both of the Harmonize Your Life self-care retreats. Um, I used it not only as a time to to speak to women about self-care and that being an area of, um, of uh, an area that I think women of color and women in general lack or at least don't prioritize, mm -hmm. but um, it absolutely is a, um, it's a privilege to be here um, on the podcast this evening. Um, I think as I, I briefly mentioned to you, um, today is actually National Women Physician Day. Wow. And... And I think that it's very fitting <laughs> to have a female physician on who, um, I mean, because female physicians, we don't just advocate for, for women and for ourselves in the profession, but we advocate for all of our patients. Yes, and yes, yes. the reason that this was important for us to celebrate women physicians is because the reality is, and even the studies have shown that women physicians, even if we don't get the same financial reimbursement as our male counterparts. Uh, there actually was a study showing yeah. that we saved more lives. Wow. And women, reason, wait a minute. Women, women yes. physicians, actually, the studies are showing that women physicians save more lives. Save more lives. They did a study of Medicare patients back in 2017. Wow. And so patients like 60, 65 and up. And they took out all of the variables that they could take out. And the only thing that was consistent was the fact that there were more lives saved by women physicians in this age bracket than male physicians. Wow. Why do you think and, that is? What, what well, you, you know, I think one of the studies pointed to the fact that just as women, we have a, a greater tendency to have nurturing mm. as part of who we are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I can see that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and so because we're we have that nurturing instinct, our 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 the way that we um, interact with our patients and with our and with our patients' families means that we have I think a broader um, a broader spectrum of what all is going on. So we're not just considering them as an individual. We're okay. not looking at them mm -hmm. as illness or diagnosis centered, we're looking more at long things as individual centered, okay. patient centered. Mm -hmm. And so then that leads to more looking at preventative care okay. and counseling, which basically leads us right back into self-care. Yes. Because yes, really yes. what self-care is, is about prevention and self-care is not, about prevention. It's I about love prevention. That. I love it. It's, because if you are taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. if you're saying yes to your needs and what you're doing mm -hmm. to prevent and to maintain, mm -hmm. you know, equal, I would say a state of um, harmony. That's it. That's and, my word. Equilibrium. Harmony. Then your, your, when stressors happen, mm -hmm. when life mm -hmm. happens, exactly. 
then you're less likely to be thrown, you know, exactly. uh, into disharmony. You're less, you're able to manage it. Not I, to say that stressors not going to happen, but you're man, it's, it's manageable because I've, pre- I've done the preventative care. I've done the work. And you know, Dr. Stacey, I, I need to say this because you know, you know, um, that we, we've, we've been dealing with my mom, with mom's illness, my mother, um, and um, mom was diagnosed with cancer, and a lot of people know that already. And th- thanks be to God, she is beating it. She, I mean, she's doing wonderful, great reports from the pathology and all of that. But you know, during the time of mom's, uh, when she was hospitalized, this uh, after the surgery, you know, she went through 14 hours of surgery, and she was in right. the hospital for 14 days, ironically. And, um, I was there most of the time and I had some, I, you know, I know my people love me and, and they're concerned about me. So I had quite a few people emailing me, texting me, you know, checking on me and making sure, and, you know, making sure that I stay true to my value for self-care. And I appreciate that. But you know what I said to one of my uh, friends when she was asking me, she was like, don't forget to take care of yourself in the midst of it. And, you know, I said, I said, I, 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 I hear that message and, and trust me, I appreciate the concern and I appreciate those that keep me accountable to my value for self-care. But I said to someone, I said, you know, when you live a lifestyle of self-care and taking care of yourself, when you hit a season like that, where you have to really dig in and it's stressful, it doesn't take you under. Yes, I no, was absolutely. tired. You're not, you're not depleted I'm not, because your yes. storehouse has already, you've, you've been filling up the storehouse. Right? Yes, you've been so. filling it up. And so I didn't fall apart. Now, when I did get depleted, when I got to that point of depletion, I rec- because I've been taking care of myself, I was able to identify when it was time to refresh and retool and rest. So yeah, I love what you're saying there. That that's so true. Preventative uh, self care is about prevention. Absolutely. And so I think a lot of times we're um, just kind of operating on fumes um, from day to day because we're so busy being busy and just doing the things that we need to do every day, going to work, Mm. coming home, you know, um, making sure that our families are taken care of, you know, we've got to cook dinner. We've Mm -hmm. got to Mm -hmm. take care of the stuff that needs to be done around the house. And then let's not add in maybe our other responsibilities Mm -hmm. outside of work and Mm -hmm. home. If you consider, Mm -hmm. um, you know, service organizations, church, um, you know, and, and then we still, you know, may have friends who might kind of pull on us or, or, mm-hmm. or you know, need us at mm-hmm. time from time to time and family, like you mentioned with your mom. And, mm-hmm. hey, this was a time where my family needed, my mother needed to be more of a priority. So I had to move, shift some other things down mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in order to make her more of a priority. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you are an individual who has not been maintaining yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and doing that work as far as self-care is concerned, it's a lot more difficult to manage all of that shifting and mm-hmm. reprioritizing that yeah. needs to happen. And then you feel like, okay, I, I'm, I've, been, I've gone through the ringer and I don't know what I'm going to do next. I, I can't mm. continue to, yeah. to operate this way. Exactly. And, and that's where most of us find our, that's where most of us live. We live right there. And we wonder why we're depleted. We wonder why we're sick. We wonder why we can't focus our mind. Uh, we can't hold a thought, or, you know, or with, with, you know, jittery or whatever. I remember when I, uh, I talk about it in my book, when I, when I got to that point where I did, I could not, I could not have racing thoughts. My hand was shaking and all kind of stuff was going off. My heart was palpitating and I didn't realize that I had run myself to the point of getting sick with my thyroid. I got, went into overdrive and then I was diagnosed with hyperthyroid Graves disease and um, yeah, and it was because I was not paying attention. It was during that time, at one time in our church, and most, most people know I'm a pastor. My husband and I pastor in this city in Atlanta. And, you know, we had like five worship services at one time on Sunday morning. We're down to three. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but <laughs> uh, we had three um, locations of our church, and we were on television, and we were doing 
we were just just setting and we were I was in school I had three children I remember at one point <laughs> all through because you know our children are 15 months apart so I had three children under the age of three you understand I double stroller and a single yeah. stroller and just wearing myself out trying to be all things to all people and did not realize that I was depleting myself and it wasn't until I got sick that I had to look up and see that I couldn't be any value to my family, to the ministry, to anybody if I wasn't taking care of me. And that's really when I started on this journey. And that's and, and unfortunately that's that's what many where many people find themselves. Yeah. They yeah. find themselves and it's not until their physical health mm-hmm. um becomes something that is noticeable mm-hmm. and you know, it's at that level of like red alert that we actually say, okay, well, I need to go get this checked out. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we go to our primary care physician Mm -hmm. and we address the physical health, but then we haven't really addressed what was underlying all of this before we got to that level, Mm. So before we ever addressed that, which is why I was so glad that when you you asked me to talk about, um, you know, Black Girl Magic, Melanated Magic, that it was not just about, you know, our medical and physical well-being, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it's also about our emotional well-being mm-hmm. um, and what we're doing to be able to protect that mm-hmm. as well because, you know, it, it, it the, the two are so interconnected. Mm-hmm, they're so mm-hmm. interrelated. Mm-hmm. And particularly for women, they are very much so interconnected and interrelated. Um you know, and biologically, neurologically, you can go to things at a cellular level and mm-hmm. look at it, or, you know, you look at the big picture and you see that someone is, has been suffering with more heart disease. They've mm-hmm. been suffering with more issues, even, the, even things like cancer, mm-hmm. um, things mm-hmm. like infection. Mm-hmm. Those things are, are absolutely tied to our stress levels and how much we put ourselves under as well. And not just you know, you know, getting a cold virus, but yeah, yeah. okay, well, what, well, what else? So we've seen so many people and they talk about, well, why is it that the flu does actually kill some people? Wow, right. Wow. Why is that? Because, you know, there are some individuals who are more susceptible wow. to not only getting infection, but also that the infection could be much more serious yeah, to them deadly. because of medical stuff mm-hmm. as well as because of what they're underneath and their age and the stresses that they put themselves under. So we have to look at both those things. So I really appreciated that it wasn't just about our physical health, but we need to look at the big picture of what we're dealing with every day. You know, it, it, that brings me to you. You talk. You started out talking about reimagining Black Girl Magic. You know that hashtag. We, you know, we Black Girl Magic. You know, when especially when we're giving a, a, a sister a high five. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's done something really good or yes. great or you know stellar. You know, we we're celebrating each other, and I love that. I love to see us oh, celebrate absolutely. each other. You know, absolutely. Um, but you know, so we use the term Black Girl Magic, and we that's a popular hashtag. But you said something at the retreat that was so powerful. You said there is a mis- misinterpretation and a misuse of the term black girl magic. You said, um, you know, you said it's too literal, it's overused, and it's misconstrued. And you asked this question. You said, are we supernatural? Are we mystical? Are we mythical? Are we magic? And, and the answer to that is, is it, it, it can be dichotomous. So it doesn't have to be just a simple, straightforward yes or no. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes that we, when it comes to use of social media, we start putting a, like way too many hashtags on something or just overuse a hashtag. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, all of a sudden, everything is black girl, ma- hashtag black girl magic. So, yes, we do want to celebrate each other. So I think, yes, there's something magical about and being able to celebrate one another when maybe um, the world that we live in, when it comes to um, whether we're just talking about the United States or whether we're just talking about, you know, across the globe, mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. you know, darker skinned girls, black girls are not celebrated. And so mm-hmm. we want to lift each other up. So mm-hmm. in looking at those things that make us powerful mm-hmm. um, and emulated and um, 
you know, imitated, there is some magic in there that people try to duplicate, mm-hmm. but they can't. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, that doesn't make us supernatural and that we have supernatural or mystical or mythical strength. We are human as well. Exactly. And so we have human frailties yeah. and we need to understand that black girl magic does not equate to me being a superhero yes. and me being able to put everyone and everything on my back. Yes. That's not what that hashtag was meant yes. to be about. Yes. And because that's not who we were ever meant to be. So it's okay for us to be able to embrace and accept all parts of what make us magical, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. including our frailties and mm-hmm. including those things that that make us human. Mm. So you 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 helped us at the retreat. You're right. So you talked about us um, this I, this myth of being the strong black woman. You know, our community. You know, and you know we say the black woman is the backbone of the black community. You know what I'm saying? And but in some ways that's been injurious to us. That yes, thing. I mean. That that thinking is, and it, it it's it's what we would call a positive stereotype because there is, you're saying strength, and strength is something that is a has a positive connotation to it, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but it becomes a, a a a slippery slope in that you can take something that is a stereotype and then make it into something that okay because they're strong, mm-hmm. then that means that they should be able to accept anything and everything Mm -hmm. that we throw at them. Mm -hmm. And so then it it becomes where, okay, well, it's okay for us to overwork Mm -hmm. the black woman because Mm -hmm. she's strong enough to take it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay for us to keep asking her for more because she's quote unquote strong enough to take it. Mm -hmm. And so in, in one sense, the strength of the black woman is being valued, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, we're being, you know, it's being misused. We are, Mm -hmm. it's being misused. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. then we're misused and mistreated Mm -hmm. and exploited and overworked Mm -hmm. and pushed down and then, then expected to just keep getting back up because Mm -hmm. that's what we've always Mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. That's what we've always accepted and acceptable. Mm -hmm. And that's not acceptable Mm -hmm. for us to continue to feel like it's okay for someone to keep knocking us back, uh, Mm -hmm. knocking us down because we'll get back up. Yeah. How so, about we don't have to get back up because we don't keep getting knocked down. Okay. And so one of the things you said to us in the in uh, the workshop was that when we do, when we if we if we're not careful, it will cause this this mentality of I have to be the strong black woman will cause us to uh, suffer in silence, um, deny when we need help, particularly mental health disorders we we looked at as weak if we if we admit that we have a mental a mental disorder or if we're if we're not able to take it and god knows being a a a christian woman and a leader in the church you know i'm a woman of faith so i just pray about it well i might need to see a a therapist too i might need to uh, you know you know i saw a a meme on (laughs) on 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 facebook you know you can have jesus and a therapist you can indeed you know i i I, I you know what i'm saying i'm a praying woman i'm preach a woman you know what I'm saying I'm a pastor but yes I have a therapist that's on my board and so yes and so th- that whole idea of being a strong black woman doesn't mean that I have to take everything and carry everybody on my on my back and that, oh absolutely yes and I and I, I think I mean look first of all God God created us I mean you know so I believe if if he has you know um pour that purpose into someone to be able to help in that way, then why wouldn't we use what God has given to us? Mm -hmm, Right. mm -hmm. So, and I have, I have always said that, yes, I I knew I wanted to be a physician from a very young age. I didn't see it, you know, panning out in this way, but I knew that this is what I was called to do. And then it, you know, God directed me down this path. So I'm like, if this is the purpose that he's poured into me, um, how does that go against, you know, uh, my faith mm-hmm. as far as this is what I was called to do. And I mean, you as a pastor understand that certainly 
you know, pr- particularly professional women, mm-hmm. many times mm-hmm. we find ourselves um, taking on a lot of burdens. Yeah. Physicians have yeah. to, particularly anybody mm-hmm. who has to get bad news. So yes. physicians, pastors, yeah. um, counselors, we a lot of times get to to unfortunately we see people at their worst sometimes. yes we do we have we to do. walk them through mm-hmm. times where mm-hmm. they're not at their absolute best they're going mm-hmm. through crises they've suffered loss and so you know we ourselves just because we're in a position to help people doesn't mean that we don't need the help ourselves exactly Exactly. And we have to make sure that we're getting the help that we need in order to facilitate helping someone else. And I think black women in general or women in general need to to have that understanding and um, as well. You know, yes, I'm able to to be mother, wife and mm-hmm. and, and sister mm-hmm. and friend mm-hmm. and and co-laborer at mm-hmm. church. Mm-hmm. But I still need someone to pour into me so that I can be my best me Mm -hmm. for me first Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then my best me for everyone else. Exactly. Exactly. Dr. Anastasia, we are almost out of time and I just want to say I am so just delighted to have you as my first guest on this podcast to be able to launch this podcast with you is just a blessing. I want to just, I want to end with one thing that you said at the retreat. It's so many things that you said. I mean, we can't do the whole workshop over again on this podcast. That's why they need to come to the retreat next year. Right. Absolutely. Right. So, so, you know, meet us in, in Aruba. Yeah, meet yes. us in Aruba because we're I'm going excited. to Aruba in 2021. <laughs> we start out the full first weekend or next year to be the second weekend because of the holiday. But we, we start in January, ladies. In January, yes. we put ourselves first before we do everybody else. We put yes. ourselves on the calendar and that's why the self-care retreat is in January so that the women can come, relax, exhale from the previous year and just kind of get a vision for their own self-care for the year before we start caring for everybody else. But you said something, there's two things that I want to, I want to, I want to end with. One thing you said was, um, you talked about protecting our health. You said we need to get rest and sleep, eat healthy. We need to have physical activity. We need to limit alcohol and smoking. I say, don't do it at all. Well, you know, a little wine is okay for stomach's sake. That's what, you know, Paul told Timothy. But anyway, uh, but that the smoking thing, I don't see that nowhere in the Bible. Anyway, uh, family health tree. You said we need to know our family health, family health history, um, um, annual. We need to get our annual physical exams, ladies, our screenings. Get your mammogram. Get your, your pelvic exams. Go to the doctor when something, don't wait until something becomes a problem. Go um preventative we got to be preventative that's the prevention Uh that's the prevention yes and then you talk to us about certain medications that we might need to be on and therapy particularly as relates to mental health and so um i really appreciate you uh for centering us around that what we need but you you helped us when we talked about black girl magic and melanated magic you gave us an acronym can you you do you can you share that acronym real quick with us real quick Yes. Um, so for MAGIC, the acronym was um, M for mental and physical health, A for awareness. So that's talking about self-awareness um, and actually self-acceptance, um, G for growth, I for inspiration. So remembering that, you know, we still have to take care of our soul and our spirit as well. And C is for community, because the reality is, is our magic really doesn't work in isolation. Mm. Um, our magic works because we are connected one to the other. Wow. And so community was so important for me to end with because we, we don't come into this world alone. Right. We, 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 you, you, you can't. Mm-hmm. You don't birth, birth yourself. So you, you are birthed into a family. Oh, and wow. so our wow. community is so integral to what we, to who we are and to who we become and every step as far as whether it's your magic whether it's your self-care you 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 need to consider the fact that this is there's a community and so uh, that's why I love your retreat because within it it's a a community that is nurturing it's a community that says you know I'm important as an individual but 
my sister's self-care is important yes, too. Yes. And I'm going to help her recognize some of those pieces yeah. that are important that she takes care of herself. Exactly. Just as I'm taking care yeah. of me. So that exactly. community spirit yeah. that's at your retreat, you can't get that. Yeah. Just, you know, in, yeah. a, in a silo. Yeah. Yeah. So our magic is mental and physical health, awareness, self-awareness, growth, inspiration, and community. That's black girl magic. And so I am so thankful to have you as a part of my community, have you on my self-care board of directors, have you in my family, my natural family. I appreciate you. You have been such a gift to me personally and to our entire family. And you are a gift to everybody that you come in contact with, Dr. Stacy. You're a bad girl. You are a bad <laughs> girl. All right. Well, All you right. know, the Alvarado men choose very well. Yes, That's what they, they do. say. And yes, I, they I do. do agree. They I say, agree you know you. what my husband say? We married above ourselves. I say, yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. Okay. Well, thank you again for being my first guest on the Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast. All right. We're going to have you again. See you soon. All right. Take care.